Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we'll show you how one high school in Bell County is letting its seniors walk across the stage in front of their families. And after health concerns led one school system to move to pick up only meals, local first responders stepped in to help get them to those with no transportation. And the closing of courtrooms and city halls has impacted families trying to adopt a child, but not stopping them. We talked with one of those families after their successful adoption. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Katie Cook. It is Wednesday, May the 6th, and your time is about 5.33. Let's go ahead and check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. Brandon, so it's looking like we might see a few scattered showers, but nothing too crazy, not a washout or anything. Is that right? Not like yesterday, not for like sure, yesterday. but you're right, That's Katie. good to hear. That's right. Absolutely. Good morning to you and good morning to everyone. But we're looking again at those scanline pinpoint Doppler radar in the skies. There's some scattered showers back out along I-75, but most of them are back out toward Lake Cumberland and out of our area for now. I think we'll see those start to move in here pretty soon as we head into the morning hours. We'll go on over and look at our temperatures, and you see close to 50 in a lot of locations, upper 40s there, mid to upper 40s, close to 50. So not too bad, but here's the thing. It's colder than yesterday, for one thing, several degrees colder in most locations, and we're going to stay steady this morning. We're not going to move up or down too much there until we get into the afternoon hours when we might see some gradual clearing. Now, you could start off the day with a little bit of uh, peaks of sunshine this morning, but it will not last if you have the uh, luck to see that. Those scattered rain chances best in the morning, but could hang around all day as we only get to right around 50 or just a little bit above for daytime highs. Katie? All right, Brandon, thank you. A federal judge says Kentuckians should not be prevented from traveling across state lines. That's what Judge William Bertelsman said in a preliminary injunction in response to a lawsuit against the ban Governor Andy Bashir signed in an executive order on March 30th. WYMT's Phil Pendleton read through the order and has more on what it says. The federal judge's decision says that the governor's executive order telling Kentuckians they cannot travel across state lines with the exception of health, work, or other essential reasons is not constitutional, even during the COVID-19 pandemic. Judge William Bertelsman says the constitutional right to travel from one state to another is firmly embedded in our jurisprudence. And he specifically mentions the Interstate 75, Interstate 71 bridge spanning Kentucky and Ohio and how the quarantine order would result in checkpoints that could result in massive traffic jams. Quarantine facilities would be impossible for hundreds, if not thousands of people. The judge said the restrictions infringe on the basic rights of citizens to engage in interstate travel, and they carry with them criminal penalties. Governor Bashir says if they need to clarify certain orders, they will clarify them. He said they want legal constitutional orders that still protects people. You're not going to see me react in, in, in ways that you might have seen others in the past to, to court cases. If a decision helps us get where we need to go, we'll adjust, we'll work with it, and we'll make sure that we're doing the very best for our people. Attorney General Daniel Cameron has called this executive order overbroad and unrealistic, and today he stated that the judge recognizes the challenges and Kentuckians trying to comply with it. In Frankfurt, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The judge also said he ruled against the travel ban because family members who simply lived a mile away from each other in northern Kentucky and Ohio would be prevented from seeing one another, even if social distancing and regulations were observed. And it's still up in the air on what schools will look like this fall. The Kentucky Department of Education wants school districts to plan for several scenarios. There could be an early start, potentially in July, a traditional start, or even a late start after Labor Day. Officials say a possible Ju July start could allow for in-person classes and move to online if cases spike in the fall. And in-person classes could also have some changes.
Dozens of parents and their graduating seniors have won a victory after suing the Laurel County Superintendent and Board of Education. The parents say the original graduation plan for North and South Laurel did not let parents attend an event where seniors are given diplomas in small groups. They argue the plan did not follow state graduation or CDC guidelines and asked a judge to block the proceedings. The Centennial Echo reports after a day-long hearing, a judge ordered the school district to revise their plan and allow parents to attend. Now a meeting is expected to be held at 5 o'clock this evening about a revised plan. And in Bell County, one high school is letting its seniors walk across the stage in front of their families while still following those social distance or those CDC guidelines. I'm sorry. Sen seniors are scheduling a time to come to the high school in cap and gown and walk across the stage in front of four of their family members. Seniors were skeptical at first, but at the end of the day, it was better than expected. Something you don't get in a normal graduation. You don't get to hear all of their awards and, gra and uh, scholarships listed out. It was a nice change for many families who were expecting to not have the chance to see the biggest day in their child's life. All the seniors were recorded as they walked across the stage. They plan to edit it into a seamless graduation video and give all the seniors a copy on DVD. And Letcher County Schools made the decision to go to pick up meals only after a few weeks ago concerned for the health of their bus drivers. Breakfast and lunch is provided, but for those with no transportation, getting that meal was a struggle. WYMT's Lacey Roberts talked with some first responders who stepped in to help. This is the new norm to feed children since in-person classes are canceled until the end of the school year. This is the first time we've ever had to the experience of making all the meals to go out. 189 meals are delivered. Every day, Monday through Friday. That's Sand Lake Fire Department, Gordon Fire Department, and Kings Creek. But you may be wondering why the fire department... Wow. The superintendent tells us delivery by bus was halted for safety reasons and they were not laid off. So we started doing it. So they get a tray of good hot food. Tuesday's menu, turkey and gravy, mashed potatoes, green beans and carrots. Then they get a bag with breakfast and condiments and fruits in it. Loading their cars and trucks. To help the community, that's what we're here for. And to see. Smile. That, and that just makes your heart feel so good. Volunteering their own time, money, and miles. 212 miles a week is what I'm putting on this trip. Expenses for gas coming out of pocket and from some donations. We do a lot of things that we have to do because, you know, for our community, if you need it, we're going to help you. No matter how big or small. In Letcher County, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. Meal deliveries and pickup will end on May 15th. As in-person gatherings are halted to the coronavirus, that includes city halls and courtrooms. Because of this, families waiting to adopt children feel the impact. In 2019, the Fields family started the adoption process for their three kids, Skyly, Aubrey, and Dusty, thinking it would be official in March. But they but only just got to finish the process on Monday with the judge through Zoom. We had to Zoom. We done the um, a Facebook Live um, so that all our family and friends could see, and it turned out Ooh. wonderful. I couldn't have asked for a more perfect adoption. The Fields family, now a family of six, celebrated the day with cake and pizza. You may remember a story we have been following out of Pike County. Earlier this year, a Head Start student in Millard School was di diagnosed with brain cancer. He just finished radiation treatments and made his way home for the first time in months. WYMT's Buddy Forbes was there as Super Cooper received a hero's homecoming. It has been a long road for Cooper Coleman. That he has... Um had these treatment, treatments and they've been successful so far and we're just very uh, thankful to the Lord and Savior. Um, he's the ultimate healer. The five-year-old Pike County boy was diagnosed with brain cancer in February and has been receiving treatment in Cincinnati ever since. This will be his first day back um, since February the 19th, so we're really excited to welcome him home. 
Cooper and his parents were welcomed home Monday with a Kentucky State Police motorcade into their church parking lot. He's got lots more chemo in front of him, but he gets to come home and see his big brother, so he's really excited. Where community members showed up for a drive through celebration, complete with signs, balloons, and some of Cooper's favorite music from his aunt's singing group. Yes, Cooper has a favorite song, and it's called Let Me Tell You About Jesus, and he used to dance around in the aisles while we sang it. So um, we're hoping to sing that for him as he drives through the parking lot. What a the event was a lot to take in for the little guy, who hit his face for most of the ride. But he is not the only one who was overwhelmed. The church families, work families, uh, so many people in this community have stepped up and um, been so very kind to us, and we can never thank them enough. By the love and support shown by the Super Cooper Troopers. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WIMT, Mountain News. And this month is Brain Tumor and Cancer Awareness Month. The family is encouraging more support and advocacy as researchers work towards a cure. Just ahead on Mountain News this morning, we'll show you how COVID-19 is affecting the lives of service animals here in Kentucky. And the forecast today, some soggy conditions back and forth, but there is some relief on the way, at least briefly. We'll talk about it in about three minutes.